Hey, you are sleeping out there, remember? On the night of the family vacation, what came out from my mother-in-law's mouth was something I had never imagined. Mom? Outside? Didn't you hear me? There's no room for you. Outsiders just sleep in the parking lot. Oh no. Why did my mother-in-law offer to share a room with me? Now I finally understood why. I had been looking forward to this family vacation for a long time. I thought it would be a good opportunity to get to know my mother-in-law better. That's what I had thought. However, I had no way of knowing that things would take an unexpected turn later on. My name is Ella. I'm 29 years old. I'm a housewife and I work for a company. I married my husband Dan about six months ago. After two years of dating, we made it to the finish line. For one year, we lived together in the apartment where he lived. I thought I would continue to live there after our marriage, but one day before we resisted, he says something like this. My mom is asking me to rent an apartment near their house. What? Your mother? Why? I don't really know either, but my parents are getting old, and it would be safer to have someone younger nearby. You know, I'm an only child. I see. As I recall, your mother gave birth to you at an older age, right? Yes, yes. She had me when she was 38, so she's almost 70. These days, she has trouble walking to the supermarket. I see. According to Dan's story, my parents in law are worried about their future since they're both quite old. They don't seem to have any problems in their daily lives, but they must be feeling a little anxious. However, thankfully, they're not asking us to live with them. It would be a harder for us to move in together, but it would be easier for us to live close by. I smiled and said to Dan, I understand. I'm worried about your mother and father, so let's move closer to them when we get married. Is that okay? You say so easily. Because you're worried about your parents too, aren't you? But then, you might have a hard time. Well, there are my in-laws, but they're going to be my family now, and I want to make sure we have a good relationship. Thank you, Ella. You're being a great help. Dan looked somewhat relieved. He worried about his parents and about how it might cause me trouble. I guess he was also conflicted by the combination of these feelings. The moment I saw his relieved face, I also felt somewhat refreshed. I'm nervous about being so close to his parents, but it will lessen Dan's anxiety. Besides, I'm their daughter in law too, so I should do what I can to help. Thus, when we got married, we moved into an apartment, which was a 10 minutes walk from my in-law's house. When I showed up at my parents' in-law's house after the move, my mother-in-law called out to me happily. Ella, thank you so much. Dan told me that you accepted the offer to live nearby so easily. Oh, it's nothing. I would like to help in any way I can. As I recall, your parents live far away, right? Yes about two and a half hours by train. Oh my god, that's a long way, but that's okay. From now on, you can think of me as your other mother and be spoiled a lot. Mother. Yes, thank you. My in-laws have a very friendly nature and are never painful to talk to. I would have a good relationship with them. That's what I thought, but at that time, I was still unaware of what was about to happen. I was about to face an inevitable problem. It was one day, about a week after our marriage, that I realized this. My husband works on the weekends, so our days off do not overlap. But since we both cherish our mornings and evenings, we didn't miss each other much. It was Sunday, and my husband usually goes to work. It was a little after 9 a.m. I was having a leisurely breakfast when the intercom rung. I wondered who he was. I thought I should have received all my packages, 
Maybe something from my mother at home? Mother. I shouted out in surprise. Then my mother-in-law opened her mouth, looking somewhat unhappy. How long are you going to make me wait, Ella? It's been almost 30 seconds since I pressed the intercom. I'm sorry, I'm just having breakfast. Breakfast? What time do you think it is? You're such a senseless person. What? Don't just stand there. Get the sleepers ready. And some tea. Yes, here you go. I did as I was told and prepared sleepers for my mother-in-law. Before I could invite her in, my mother-in-law headed for the living room, sat down on the sofa, and began to look around the room. I don't know why she was in the bad mood, but I must have put her in a bad mood any longer. I hurriedly prepared a cup of tea and brought it to her. Here you go. I'm sorry I didn't have any tea cakes, she sighed in setting a disgusted tone. You can't even make tea properly. You're not a good wife, are you? I guess I would have to train you after all. Huh? Train me? All right. Now that I've given you my blessing to marry Dan, you're going to act exactly as a member of the great family from now on, okay? Um, nobody talks that way about accepting our marriage, right? And besides, don't you remember? You said, think of me as your other mother, right? At these words, my mother-in-law burst out laughing and looked at me as if I was an idiot. What are you talking about? You can't possibly have taken those words seriously. Of course it was because your father-in-law and Da were there, weren't they? Then you mean you didn't really think that? Of course. What the value of a plain good-for-nothing wife like you? Dan brought you here, so I said yes for the time being. But I was supposed to be the one to find Dan's partner. But that doesn't mean you have to talk like that. Shut up. All you have to do is what I tell you to do. I finally understood what I had seen in my mother-in-law. I realized that everything I had seen of my mother-in-law was a fabrication of her character. In reality, she was a person with such a warped nature. Perhaps she became this way because she loved her son so much but that does not mean that she should be hostile toward her son's wife. However, I don't think she would listen to me even if I talked back to her. Besides, I didn't want to upset family relations in a situation where we had just gotten married. It is not in my nature to disobey my elders. No matter how wrong my mother-in-law's way of thinking was, it was not so easy to talk back to my husband's mother. The fact that I didn't speak back here made the situation worse. My mother-in-law began to visit us regularly without prior notice and began to bully me under the guise of helping me. You are a really bad wife, aren't you? You can't even do your own housework. You're worthless. If you're such a failure, I shouldn't have let you get married and so on. How many times have I shed tears at these heartless wars? Of course, I thought about talking to my husband about it, but my mother-in-law made the first move. I was visiting because I want to get to know Ella. She told that to my husband. Whenever my husband came home from work, he would smile and say to me, Did my mother come by today too? I'm really sorry, okay? She's the type of person who goes all out with people she wants to be friend with. No, you know Dan? Well, you will have to cut her some slack. Mom is very happy to have a girl like you as a daughter-in-law. I see. The smile on my husband's face as he spoke happily was too bright for me to tell the truth. In such a state, I realized that half a year had passed since our marriage. My mother-in-law was still bullying me. Then one day, my mother-in-law called my husband and I to her house and told us about that family vacation. Let's go on our annual family vacation. This year, Ella is coming with us. Me too? 
Of course, we're a family. She had already decided where to go and where to stay, it seems. The destination was a hotel with a spa, and the rooms were for two people only. I thought it would be just me and my husband, but then, my mother-in-law made an outrageous comment. Oh, by the way, Ella, you will be staying with me in a double room. Me and you? Yes, let's have a good talk, just the two of us women. But, if that's fine with dad and dad too. At my mother-in-law's words, my father-in-law and husband looked a little strange. Then my husband opened his mouth in concern. I don't mind that, but are you okay with that, Ella? What? Aren't you a little nervous about sharing a room with mother? Well, that's... Of course it would be awkward, and I would prefer to be in a different room if at all possible. But under the circumstances, I couldn't say that clearly. Instead of my shuddering, my mother-in-law spoke to my husband. What are you talking about, them? What do I always say? I go to your house to get to know Ella. Oh yes, of course. But it's a trip, and Ella should be able to enjoy it without any worries. Don't worry. There are some things you don't have to worry about when you're with your fellow women. Is that how it is? Well, if you insist, I don't mind. Mom, don't pester Ella too much, okay? I know, I know. We'll get along fine, don't worry. Thus, without being able to express my opinion or anything else, the decision was made to share a room with my mother-in-law. My husband repeatedly asked me, Are you sure you want to do this? But I couldn't say no to him. On the day of the trip, I got into the car with a depressed feeling. And after driving for about two hours, we arrived at the hotel. After two hours of driving, we arrived at the hotel and headed for the spa. I didn't want to go in with my mother-in-law, so I lied and said I had a stomach ache and shifted the timing of my entry. Afterwards, the four of us had dinner at a small restaurant inside a hotel. The hotel has a good reputation, so all the food was really good. The only problem was that I'd be in the same room as my mother-in-law. The spa was really nice, and the food was very good. Now all I have to do is sleep with my mother-in-law in the same room for the night. After dinner, I spent some more time in the spa. When I returned to my room, I decided to quickly go to bed, not to engage in conversation with my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law was still awake. As I was getting ready to go to bed, I heard a voice behind me saying, Excuse me? I fearfully turned around and saw my mother-in-law smiling wryly at me. Mother, is there something wrong? What are you doing getting ready for bed? You sleep outside, don't you? What? What came out from my mother-in-law's mouth was something I had never imagined. I managed to squeeze out a few words as she smiled triumphantly at me. Mom, outside? Didn't you hear me? I said sleep outside. Wait a minute. Then why did you say you wanted to sleep in the same room with me? Of course to get rid of you like this, there's no room for you. You can sleep in the parking lot. Oh no. Why did my mother-in-law offer to share a room with me? Now I finally understood why. I had been looking forward to this family trip for a long time. I thought it would be a good opportunity to get to know my mother-in-law better. That's what I had been thinking. At that moment, the anger I had been trying so hard to suppress overflowed. I couldn't take it anymore. I don't want to be in the same space with this person any longer. I don't care what Dan and my father-in-law think. This situation, I've had enough of it. I left a room with a bare minimum of luggage. Then I went to the car and decided to stay there. Fortunately, I always had the spare key for the car in my bag so it was no problem. 
but if I hadn't, I would have had to spend the night freezing outside. I checked my phone and found a message from my mother-in-law. Be back in time for breakfast, so they don't find out. I will tell my husband everything after this trip. I made up my mind and went to sleep. The next day, Ella, hey, Ella. I woke up to the sound of my husband's voice and saw him and my father-in-law. It was still dark and the sun was not yet up. Huh? Dan? And Dad too. Why are you? That's my line. Why are you sleeping in the car? Did you and mom have a fight? That's because I called you to see if you wanted to watch the sunrise, but you didn't respond. So I assumed you were still sleeping. I was about to drive to the spot when I was surprised to see you sleeping in the car. Oh, that's right. I checked my phone and found multiple incoming calls from my husband. Sorry I couldn't answer. My father-in-law opened his mouth with a stern look on his face when I told him this. Ella, why were you sleeping in the car? That's... I'm sure there is something going on. I want you to tell me everything. Dad? Perhaps my father-in-law was on to something? I showed them the message I had received from my mother-in-law last night and told them the whole story of how my mother-in-law had been bullying me. When I finished, my husband and father-in-law's faces turned red. I could tell they were quite angry. Eventually, they began to discuss the matter. After a few minutes, my husband and father-in-law returned to the hotel. They had to travel back in their hounds. After loading them into the back of the truck, my husband grabbed the steering wheel. Hey, Dan, where are we going? Where? We're going home. Ha, huh, but your mom's not here. You don't have to call her mom anymore. I don't even think of her as my mother anymore. Damn. Apparently, my father-in-law and husband believed me. By the time we arrived home, the sun had completely risen, and the weather was pleasant. We bought breakfast at the nearby convenience store, and were eating it at my in-law's house when I received a call on my phone from my mother-in-law. I looked at my father-in-law and husband, turned on the speakerphone, and pressed the answer button. My mother-in-law shouted, Hello? Angrily at me as soon as I answered it? Hey, you. Do you know what time it is? Get your ass back in your room. I'm sorry, mother. I don't think I would be coming back there. What? What are you talking about? If it gets out that you didn't stay in your room, I'm the one who is going to get to be pissed off. Get your ass back here, you stupid wife. At that moment, my father-in-law slammed the desk with a bang and took my phone away from me. Then he shouted angrily into the phone. That's enough. You've been picking on Ella behind our backs. Didn't you have any shame? You're the one who is an idiot. What? Wilbur, why are you? I'm so sick and tired of you. I can't believe you've been pretending to be friendly with Ella and picking on her. I'm divorcing a lousy woman like you. Don't you ever come home again. Wait a minute. It's a misunderstanding. Ella and I had a fight last night. My husband snatched a phone from my father-in-law. His voice rising. A fight? Then why was Ella sleeping in the car? You forced her out. Dan. Why even you too? I'm telling you. We've already gone home. You can pay the hotel bill there too, okay? And Dad says he won't let you in the house anymore, so you will have to go someplace else. No way. Wait, damn. You had it coming. It's your fault for making Ella suffer. I will never think of a woman like you as my mother ever again. I don't want you in our lives ever again. My husband hung up the phone and blocked my mother-in-law. He then bowed deeply to me. Ella, I'm sorry I didn't recognize it before. 
I'm so sorry for all the pain I've caused you. Yeah, me too. I just couldn't tell you the truth when I thought about how you are your mother's beloved son. I will protect you from now on. So if you have any problems, you must talk to me right away. Okay, thank you. After that, my mother-in-law had a rough time. Since she didn't have a credit card, she couldn't pay for the hotel. So she kept calling her husband's phone. But he didn't respond and completely ignored her. My mother-in-law had no choice but to contact her own brother and asked him to replace the money. When he heard about all this from my father-in-law, he was so furious that he forced her to sign the divorce papers that my father-in-law had prepared and took her in. She now lives in her brother and sister-in-law's house and works part-time to make ends meet and is apparently being treated like a slave. Her brother and sister-in-law also bully her and her life seems to be really hard. However, she has nowhere else to go. She will probably have to spend the rest of her life as a housekeeper at her brother and sister-in-law's house. I, on the other hand, took this opportunity to move in with my husband to my father-in-law's house. We have decided to remodel my parents-in-law's house. All the expenses are my father-in-law's. And they are even going to add a room for our future child. I can't thank my father-in-law and husband enough for believing my story and going to such great lengths. I want to contribute as much as I can as a daughter-in-law for them who saved me. My name is Sally. I'm 42 years old and I'm an office worker. My husband George is two years older than me and was originally my senior at work. He was a good worker and I respected him a lot. We had a son right after we got married and had a happy family. However, the relationship between my husband and I started to fall apart at some point. It is no exaggeration to say that the cause of the breakdown was my husband's parents. My mother-in-law in particular did not like me from the beginning of our marriage. She was always picking on me in any ways she could. However, my husband defended me in the beginning and he used to be my senior at the same place of work. We used to live in a rural area far from my parents in Lowe's house. So we managed to get by without seeing them most of the time. But when our son was about to enter high school, my husband got transferred and that location was also where my in-laws lived. In addition, my husband's new workplace and my son's high school were close to my in-laws house. So inevitably, we ended up living close to them. I resigned from the company when my husband got transferred, looked for a new job in the area where we were going to live, and changed the jobs. It was easier at this company than my previous one. Work finished in the evening and there was a little overtime. I can afford to make in lovely dinners and box lunches for my son and husband but my mother-in-law often arrives at the same time as me, so every time this happens, it feels very difficult and stressful because she's a bit of a bully. Then, my parenting-in-law planned a trip to a hot spring and invited me to join them. They said that they want to take me and my son on the trip. What do you think about this? When I asked my son this, he replied, I can't go because I have a camp with my club on the Saturday and Sunday after next. My son plays baseball, which he has wanted to continue since junior high, and the high school he entered had a strong baseball team. So they have a training camp every year from all in the year. I see. I guess he can't be helped them. What? Don't tell me you're going mom. Yes, because I like hot springs. Are you okay with that? My son knows I'm being treated badly by my in-laws and that even my husband has been treating me roughly lately. That's why he's worried I might get hurt in some way. Well, I would be fine, right? If something happens to me, then that's it. My son said, all right, and seemed satisfied for the time being. And before I knew it, it was the day before the spa trip. 
tomorrow, go rent our car and pick up that and mom, and then come back. My husband said this to me while watching TV. What? I'm going to rent our car, and what are you going to do? I'm tired from work today, so I will sleep until the last minute tomorrow. Why don't you pick them up and come back, and then I will join you. We're going to the same destination anyway. My husband is always doing this these days. He puts me in charge of everything. I've been working all day and into the evening. I'm doing the housework on top of that. I'm also the one who prepared his lunch and the dinner he just ate. If anything, I think I'm more tired than he is. I've been picking up my father-in-law. He's just lazing around and making it sounds as if he is the only one who is tired from working. When we were first married, he did about half the housework. When my son was younger, George took the lead in doing the housework and was really helpful. As our son got older, my husband's just responsibility increased and he had less time for housework, but he still helped me clean the house on his days off. Sometimes he cooked for us. But after my in-laws started coming in and out of our house more often, my husband stopped doing housework completely. That is because my mother-in-law interferes. When my husband was doing the housework, she would say, Why is George doing the housework? It's a wife's job. And she would stop him. The breadwinner of the family should only do his job. Since she said this to him every time, he gradually got brainwashed and stopped doing the housework. And then he said, That's right. There is no need for me to do the housework. Why did you let me do it all this time? Going as far as to blame me. And when it got to that point, it was beyond my control. And I don't think I can make it right now. My husband has changed drastically in the past few years. The reason he got transferred in the first place was because his job wasn't going so well. So he takes it out on me on a daily basis these days. But when I try to argue with him, he always tries to reason with me and never backs down. I've become so annoyed with him that I've decided to just let him be. It's the most stress-free way to live. I thought about divorce, but my son went to a private high school, and the tuition was too expensive. And when I thought about putting him through college, I felt that being a single parent was too much of a challenge, so I couldn't go through with the divorce. I've come to think of my parents as an old man with a bit of a pain in the butt, but I can bear with it as long as he gave some money. When I think in this way, I'd feel less stressed out. I thought that I didn't have to take quite a risk to get a divorce, so here we are. I joined this trip because it was a trip to a hot spring resort that I love, so I knew I could enjoy it even if I had to do it alone. And if I wanted, I could separate from my in-laws and my husband. Perhaps I'm thought of as a designated driver. But my husband and the father-in-law can both drive, so what the heck? At any rate, I figured I shouldn't expect anything from my husband. So I went to get the rental car like he said, and went to pick up my in-laws. Sally, aren't you a little late? What, that's the car you were driving today? Why didn't you get a bigger car? Well, it's better than your mini car. I usually use the minicar I bought myself. I commute to work by car, so I paid for it myself, assuming I would use it most of the time. I don't often go out for long distances, so I thought a minicar would be enough. And besides, I also like the interior and the color, so I bought it. And yet, my husband drives this without my permission, and also lets my in-laws ride it. My in-laws complain about the fact that it was a mini car, and they looked down on me saying that I could only afford a small one. So I had to go out of my way to take a rental car for the trip. Then I thought, 
Why don't we just take my father-in-law's car for the trip? He could drive up to our house and just drive to the spring resort would be the smoothest way. But my father-in-law said he doesn't do long drives, and he doesn't want anyone else to drive his car. So for such a selfish reason, I rented our car and my husband and I drove. But in the end, my husband who said he would switch with me on the way, was asleep the whole time. And so I drove all the way to the destination. While my husband was sleeping, my father-in-law still complained about my driving, saying things like, the best way is to go and stay in the right lane. He would also tell me that I could have made a right turn when there was clearly oncoming traffic. And when I slowed down because I know the light is going to turn red, he would say, why didn't you go? It's really depressing. My mother-in-law, who does not have a driver's license, also joins in complaining about my driving. I don't want my mother-in-law, who can't even drive, to tell me what to do. And at least, I am better than my father-in-law, who has crushed his car at least five times, for real. I tell him he should return his license before he gets in a big accident. But he says, Don't treat me like an old geezer. I'm not to blame for all the accidents I have had. He's still driving. Well, I didn't want to get in a car driven by my father-in-law, so I don't mind if I drive, but it's really distracting for me to have him interrupt me every single time. I mean, he leans over from the back seat and says this and that, so his spit flies into my hair and it's really disgusting. When we reach our destination, my husband finally wakes up. Oh, that was surprisingly quick. I was really annoyed at my husband saying such a thing in a casual manner. I was tired from being in the car all day, so I wanted to stay at an inn for the rest of the day and didn't go out with my parents in law. I went to the hot spring to wash my dirty hair and took a walk around the hotel by myself. And with that, I was able to make the most of my time. We all had dinner together and went back to the room. By the way, I was alone in the single room this trip, so my husband shared a room with his parents. There are a lot of things to be irritated about, but to tell the truth, I feel more comfortable this way. I still took my time in the hot spring and went back to the room. I had a beer and snacks from the store, watched TV, and had a relaxing time. I wonder if my son is having a nice meal with his baseball teammates at the cafeteria. Or is he talking or playing games in the shared room? I would probably get some messages or phone calls from my mother-in-law around this time. So I decided not to do anything. We would talk about how the trip went when we get home. Before I knew it, it was already midnight, so I got under the covers and went to bed. The next morning, I woke up with a very fresh air around me. Oh, how I wish I could have mornings like this all the time. It's still two hours until the breakfast time that my in-laws told me. It's only 6.30, hmm. It's become so ingrained in my body that I have to get up in time to make lunch. That's right. Since I'm here, I might as well take a hot bath. I went to the hot spring again and soaked in the water slowly. The weather was beautiful, so the open air bath was very pleasant. I went back to my room and called my son to let him know I was coming home this evening. As I recall, he said he would be back tonight, so depending on how the trip goes, I thought I might have to ask him to wait at home alone. I sent a message, packed my bags, put on my makeup. And since it was almost 8.30 a.m., I decided to go have breakfast. I was supposed to have breakfast with my in-laws. So I went to the room where the three of them were staying. But no matter how many times I knocked, there was no response. Maybe they had already gone ahead of me. I had no choice but to go to the breakfast room, but there was no sign of my in-laws. The breakfast room was not that big. 
If I went around to all the tables, I should be able to find them soon. I sent a message to my husband, but he didn't reply. I thought it was impossible. So when I went to the front desk to check, they told me that my husband and in-laws had already finished their breakfast and left. They told me breakfast was at 8.30. But in fact, the breakfast room was open an hour earlier than that. My in-laws and husband intentionally lied about the time, went to the trouble of telling me to start eating at 8.30 a.m., and that I was not supposed to come to the breakfast room early. Even more so, I was supposed to do the checkout. My mother-in-law told me, we'll pay for your stay. Her words were a lie. I would have to pay for two rooms. Of course, I would not have a car. In short, my in-laws had planned to leave me behind and return home on their own. I was so pissed off, but in a way, it made me feel better. If you're going to do that, then I'm ready to do this. I went to the breakfast room with a refreshed mind and elegantly enjoyed the buffet breakfast. Well then, what should I do now? While I was thinking about that, I got a call from my mother-in-law. Excuse me, where are you? Is what I said. And my mother-in-law started laughing. I thought that since we were going on a vacation, we should enjoy spending time together as a family. If that's the case, you didn't have to go to the trouble of leaving me here. Why didn't you just come with the three of you to begin with? We only brought you along to pay for the car and the accommodation. But you still got to come to your favorite hot spring resort and have a nice meal, so you should be grateful. If that's the case, they all could have paid less if they'd just gone by themselves. Why should I go out of my way to pay for my husband and in-laws accommodations? I'm so angry at my in-laws that all I can do is sigh. Well then, we'll just go sightseeing and go home first. Why don't you run back, Sally? I don't know how many days it would take though. Ha 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 ha. My mother-in-law was laughing like a fool. As you can imagine, I don't like being told off like this. Is George driving? I told her to put me on speakerphone so he could hear me. Then my mother-in-law seems to have switched over, and I can hear my husband's voice. What's up? What the hell do you want? Haha. <laughs> Were you going to leave me from the beginning? Don't be so angry, haha. <laughs> You like the hot springs here, didn't you? Why don't you go relax by yourself today? But you have laundry to do. And John is coming home from training camp, so come home this evening and do your chores properly. Hearing my husband's voice, who seemed so happy to make me obey him, there was no restraint in me anymore. What? You should at least do your own laundry? Hey, hey, hey. Don't act like that. I'm the head of the household. Even more so, I'm the one who is telling you to take it easy. When normally, you should be the one crying and saying thank you, right? That's so old-fashioned and lame, so you shouldn't do that. What? You're so cocky. I'll give you a lecture when I get back. Prepare yourself. Oh, don't worry about my words because today is the last time I'm going to see you. Huh? Both my husband and in-laws sounded surprised at the same time. Oh, I mean you're not even here today? Or should I say, I haven't even seen you today. So last night dinner at the hotel was the last time, right? Haha. <laughs> what do you mean? I heard my husband's upset voice, so I quickly responded. Because I'm divorcing you. What? You know, just about a year ago, you confronted me with divorce papers, right? My husband's attitude had changed since we moved in, but around this time last year, he was particularly cold. I couldn't stand it any longer, and when I questioned him about it, he suddenly got angry and confronted me with the divorce papers. I was upset at the time, 
and because I was concerned about our son's tuition fees and other things, I refused to divorce him. After that, my husband immediately said, Please pretend that we never discussed divorce. I am sorry for my emotional outburst. So we decided to stay married, but there's no doubt that I harbored a great deal of distress toward my husband. So I secretly hired a detective agency to investigate him. It seems that he was having an affair with a classmate from high school. They met again a little after we moved here, and she was a single mother with a daughter in middle school. I think he tried to leave me to be with the woman he was having an affair with, but he was probably turned down. He probably felt that it would be a disadvantage for him to leave me at that point and only pay child support and be single. Besides, if had me to do the housework, he wouldn't have to do anything himself. In short, I was treated as a convenient housekeeper from then on. Well, I also got some money from him and treated him like an old man, so I guess it's the same. But I kept the evidence of the affair I'd gathered from the agency to use it as a bargaining chip if something happened. Even it was a past affair, it's only been a year, so I can get a divorce at your fault. As I said this, I had the surprised voice of my father-in-law and mother-in-law over the speakerphone. It seems that they didn't think my husband was having an affair. Then I decided to say something else that surprised them even more. Just because you've been demoted and your salary has dropped dramatically, doesn't mean I'm not going to charge your alimony mercilessly. Again, I hear my in-laws surprise. How could you be so arrogant when I make as much as you do? Even though I earn the same amount of money, I pack lunches for you and John. I clean the house and make dinner for you both, right? You got left behind and had a cushy job all the time, but you always talked about how tired you were and how you were the breadwinner of the family. I said things that hurt him more and more, and he became silent. I stayed married to you because I was thinking about our child's tuition and all that. But I did some research, and I found out that even if I became a single mother, my parents are willing to help, so I realized that I don't need you. Plus, you'd be paying alimony and child support, okay? I'd rather have a happy, stress-free life, even if it means losing a little bit of income. So I'm filing for divorce. Enjoy your day of sightseeing without me. My in-laws were calling my name in a panic and George was stammering and about to say something, but I didn't care and hung up the pawn. The bus to town was just about to arrive, so I got on the bus and went to the station, then took the train to my house. I was so relieved to be able to say all the things I wanted to say to my husband, so I had some lunch and a beer. I was able to catch the bus and the train at the right time, so I was home before evening, I was glad that my husband had confronted me with a complete one at that time. And while I was packing my things, my son came home. Oh, aren't you home only? I mean just you? When I told him what had happened, he scolded me lightly saying, I told you so. But if you divorce him, I will stay with you. My son didn't seem to be bothered by it. Well, he's a sophomore in high school, so I guess he somehow understood that my relationship with my husband was not good. Well, I'm going to pack up my stuff. John packed his bag quickly and efficiently, because I had called my parents to come and pick us up while I was still on the train. When my parents arrived by car, my son transported the heavy stuff into the trunk. That's what you'd expect from a baseball player. My husband doesn't exercise at all, so when we moved into the new house, he kept saying, Oh, it's heavy, it's so heavy, complaining about it and being so pathetic. In no time at all, my son and I finished loading our things and headed to my parents' house. In the meantime, I kept getting phone calls from my husband and in-laws. So after we had arrived and I calmed down a bit, 
I called him back. Finally, you picked up? Hey, why weren't you answering the phone? I can answer the phone whenever I want to, right? Don't be ridiculous. I haven't even grounded you or divorced yet. Even if you say so, you and I are strangers now, huh? I kept the divorce papers you confronted me with before, so I filed them. Oh no. So, all I have to do now is ask you for alimony and child support. Aside from that, I only need to go and talk to my lawyer about those. Wait a minute, Sally, please reconsider. It's true I betrayed you once, but don't worry, you're all I see now. I will take care of you again. I was so sickened by my husband's word that I almost threw up the lunch I ate. Just how weak-minded are you? I don't have a shred of love left in me for you. So why don't you try again with your mistress? If you try again with her. Oh, but she's already remarried now, so maybe not. Haha. <laughs> huh? My husband was surprised to find out the truth. Apparently, even if he couldn't remarry, he thought that his mistress would still have feelings for him, even though they parted once. Why do men have such stupid ideas? I found out that his affair partner had remarried when I was filing for alimony. She told me that she would pay me alimony and ask me not to do anything to ring her life. She also apologized for having the affair. So I decided to just get a larger amount of alimony. So it's fine, no matter how much money I need to pay for my son's tuition. My husband also paid alimony and child support. George couldn't pay with his own savings or salary, so he asked his parents to pay in his stead. They didn't think their son would give them that kind of trouble. They were so shocked that they were bedridden for a while. Parental stupidity at its finest. But I was able to punish my in-laws too. So let's say it's a good thing. After that, everything was resolved and I moved into a rented apartment with my son. My son has grown up to be a good boy, just the same as he was. Today, I'm at his baseball game with my parents. My son looks so dignified when he's stunned in the batter's box, and he looks so cool and mature. That metal bat catches the ball with a cow sound. And my son gets a hit and scores a run. He raises his fist to his teammates on the base. As I thought about how I want to continue watching my son grow up and taking good care of him, I uploaded John's success with joy. It's now good to have you around. From now on, you will live alone in this house. Soon after the baby was born, my husband brought me to a shabby apartment near his parents' house. No, I can't wait to by myself. This is crazy. Give my baby back. Quiet, Kelly. You're disturbing the neighbors. I'm not in love. Stand by my husband's side. Ignored my pain with a stern expression. And I was at my wit's end. Helpless to do anything about it. And to make matters worse, my mother-in-law behaved in the most unthinkable way. She started leaving food scrap in front of that shabby apartment every day. With the wetter throw it away, the bags of garbage piled up. Then, I opened one of them and found something I couldn't believe. I'm Kelly, a 33 years old housewife. My husband Walter and I have been married for three years. We were looking forward to the birth of our first child. But the birth of the baby was accompanied by anxiety. The reason was Walter's extravagant spending and temperamental nature. And my relationship with my mother-in-law. My father-in-law has already passed away and live with my mother-in-law. But my mother-in-law and I don't get along, and she's always sarcastic. What? The way you folded the laundry? It will get weird winkles like this. Why can't you even do it properly? Just do it again. But 
But the other day, you told me to fold them like this. What? You're blaming me? Then my mother-in-law knocks the laundry I folded onto the floor. She is very thorough and picky in her housework. And she changes what she says almost every time. Then she complains about it as if it's my fault. Kelly, why are you such a bad learner? And when my husband overhears me talking with my mother-in-law, he gets in a bad mood. What the hell is wrong with you? Put yourself in my shoes. Coming from work and, and having to listen to this all the time. He would hit things and yell at me. Walter is cold towards me. But for some reason, he is very obsessed with me. I have a cell phone, but the only contacts I have are with Walter and my in-laws. My internet browsing is constantly monitored. And of course, he's using GPS to track my location. Even before we got married, I knew he was a jealous person. But after we got married, I started to think about the divorce because his jealousy just got worse. One day, I went shopping and called the lawyer's office from a payphone. I explained the situation to the lawyer and somehow started to work toward divorce. Fortunately, I had some savings before our marriage and the lawyer was sympathetic to my situation. Let's make sure the divorce goes through. As for the remuneration, you can pay me in installments. Once you have a stable living situation, the lawyer kindly said to me, I thought that the divorce was proceeded smoothly. Then one day, I noticed that I had not been feeling well for several days. I rushed to the hospital and found out that I was pregnant. I had been taking bills to avoid pregnancy in order to get a divorce. But my husband hid them from the divorce. I must have gotten pregnant then. I was torn between joy at having a child and anger at him. My parents had already passed away, so I had no home to go back to. In addition, my morning sickness was so severe that I was unable to take any action for divorce. Walter seemed convinced that having a child would keep me from running away. Or maybe he's just really happy to have a child. And he softened his attitude. We'll have to remodel this house. If it's a boy, he should be an athlete. And if it's a girl, we'll have to raise her to be a good wife and a wise mother. My husband says these things and develops selfish theories about education. I thought to myself, I'll divorce you after the baby is born though. I gave a vague answer and let it slide for a while. My mother-in-law was as mean as ever toward me. But there was a slight change in her attitude. If something happens to you, the neighbors will misunderstand that I did something to you. So, Kelly, stop worrying and concentrate on the baby. Huh. Why did Walter even marry this woman? You know, Kelly, honestly, I want you to leave. But I'll take care of you until the baby is born. Somehow, I was able to rest because she didn't force me to do the housework like before. My morning sickness was pretty bad. What the hell, Kelly? Where can you eat that? It was such a pain in the ass. My mother in law kept complaining to me, but she did make meals for me. But in the end, I almost became malnourished and I had to spend some time in the hospital before the baby was born. And I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. I was about to contact a lawyer to get a divorce from Walter when I noticed that my bank book was missing. Moreover, my diary, which I had intended to hand over to the lawyer, was also missing. It has a record of harassment from Walter and my mother-in-law. Walter? I heard Walter's voice behind me. Is this what you're looking for? I turned around to see Walter standing there, grinning and holding the diary I had hidden away. What on earth were you writing in it? Even looking in it. 
Give it back? Shut up. What the hell were you doing behind my back, Gelly? I'm preparing for a divorce. I can't live with people like you any longer. Someone who breaks things, and yells, and tries to subdue me. Divorce me? Please? It wasn't exactly what I had planned. But I made up my mind to ask you for a divorce. Divorce? Yeah, I do that. But we did it. With that, Walter took me by the hand and walked up. He drove me to a shabby apartment near my parents in Mo's house. It's not good to have you alone. From now on, you will live alone in this house. As long as you live here, I'll let you see your kid once a week. But if you leave, you'll never see him again. No, this is crazy. Give my baby back. Then my mother in though came out from behind him and said to me, Quiet, Kelly. You are disturbing the neighbors. My mother in though is holding my son. I'm looking at my son's face in her arms and I'm trying to think. I have to get out of this situation somehow. I thought desperately, but no answer came to me. In the meantime, I was stuck in that shabby apartment. Walter had found out, while I was in the hospital, that I was planning to get a divorce. He had taken my baby hostage. I now had no choice but to live in the shabby apartment. A few days later, things turned an unexpected way. I noticed just a strange odor wafting through the air. I looked for the source of the smell and found, and there was a garbage dumped in front of the apartment. I couldn't believe my eyes, but I soon realized that it was my mother in no. I looked up and saw my mother in no standing in front of the door with my son in her arms. Oh, Kelly, you just woke up? Just because we are taking care of your baby does mean you are not a responsible mother? Well, that's all right. Can you leave them at your place until garbage day? Huh? What on earth does this person want? I tried my best to wrap my head around. My mother in those nonsensical behavior. First of all, I have to get the child back and contact a lawyer. That's what I thought. And somehow I managed to find an opportunity to do so. A few days passed in the meantime. Meanwhile, every morning, there was a garbage dumped in front of my room. What did I do to deserve this? I was getting angry. As I was about to carry the garbage bag, I noticed that the bag was transparent, whereas it was usually black. And when I looked at the bag, I found an envelope inside. It was labeled, To Kelly. I immediately took out the envelope and looked inside. There were some hundred dollar bills and a letter from my mother in no. The letter said something I had never expected. I am so sorry for everything I have done. I knew my son had issues. I wanted you to escape, so I was hard on you. I'm really sorry that I had no choice but to behave like that because Walter's surveillance was there to I'm also sorry that I could only give you this much money on Walter's what a lot. I received a call from your lawyer yesterday. I could have told him the details. He said he would visit us tomorrow at noon. So please took the baby and ran away. Leave the rest to me. I'm so sorry, Kelly. I hope you understand. The letter from my mother-in-law was written in blurred letters, as if she had written it while crying. I realized for the first time that my mother-in-law was also my husband's victim. I checked the other garbage bags and amazed at the contents. I found envelopes in the other bags as well, containing cash. I realized that my mother-in-law was trying to take care of me all this time. I learned that she was being as kind as she could be 
in letting me see my baby under Walter's watch. Because of Walter's personality, even if she was his mother, he probably looked down on my mother-in-law because she was a woman. In addition to the cash, the envelope also contained several photographs of my baby. I cried as I felt my mother-in-law's concern for me. I gathered my thoughts for the next day's meeting with the lawyer and went to sleep. The next day I woke up to the sound of the doorbell. When I answered it, I found my mother-in-law stunned in there, holding my son in her arms. Walter is going on a business trip today and won't be back for two days. This may be your last chance. Gilly, I'm so sorry for everything. My mother-in-law bows repeatedly to me as she holds out my son to me. But, but, what about you? Walter will get furious with you if you are gone. That would be true, but he's my son. It's my responsibility. Besides, I can't even work at my age. I am too stupid to make a living without Walter's help. N no, this just... I decided to invite my mother in no in and listen to her carefully. She told me that her husband and Walter had brainwashed her over the years. You can't do anything. As they imprint these words, she spent most of her life only for the two of them. Because of this, she has lived a life without freedom for a long time. She was not even allowed to watch TV when her husband was alive. After he passed away, she realized something was wrong with her life from a TV show she was watching, but she couldn't even get out of it on her own. Then I came alone as her daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law was trying to get rid of me by hinting me coldly so that I wouldn't follow her in her footsteps. She told me this in tears. Let's run away together so that Walter won't ruin the rest of your life, okay? My mother-in-law responds to my persuasion with confusion. But no, there's no way I can do that. I can't do anything. I don't want to cut in your way, Kelly. My mother is so not. Meanwhile, my lawyer arrived. I told you the whole story. The lawyer had a rather grim expression on his face. What do you want to do? Please tell me how you really feel. I'll do my best to support you. After a few moments of silence, my mother-in-law told us what was on our mind. The truth is, I want to get away from Walter. I love him because he's my child, but it's too painful. Living in constant denial about my life. It's also hurt that I won't be able to see my grandson anymore. And with that story, she showed us the bruises on her arms. The bruises were so bad that I was surprised and I asked my mother-in-law about it. She said that Walter became violent with her when he got angry at the babies crying at night. She said Walter had often been violent to her, even before our marriage. The lawyer's face was clearly filled with anger. You should run away. I'll show him the pain. You two, run away from this immediately. He began to persuade her to leave, but his effort to persuade her were in vain, and she went straight back to her house. A lawyer and I decided to get ready to run away. I called my cousin's house, told her what had happened, and asked her to move in for a while. My cousin, in tears, accepted. I quickly packed up, took the baby, and headed for my cousin's house. A few days later, I got a call from my lawyer. He asked me if I could be willing to participate in a meeting to discuss my divorce from Walter. During this call, I was told by the lawyer that my mother in law would also be attending the meeting. When I visited the lawyer's office, Walter and my mother in law were already there. When Walter saw me, he said, I was worried about you. I'll kick her out if it's about my mom. 
So, the three of us will live together from now on. Okay? I ignored him and sat down. Our lawyer started talking about divorce, alimony, and child support. Meanwhile, Walter was screaming at me to come back. Walter, the lawyer is speaking now. Is important? Can't you even listen? When I replied, Walter's face turned red, as if he was about to go berserk. But he seemed to be holding back in front of the lawyer. After the lawyer had explained everything, and a conversation had settled down, my husband opened his mouth. What's the matter with you? Why can't you understand that I love you so much? Do you really think you can get a divorce or over something like this? Walter asked me. Huh? Don't make me laugh. I've never felt any love from you. I've got a full tie to the outside box, and I've endured you for me day by day. Why are you so selfish? I replied with a laugh, and laughed just a lot. The lawyer said quickly, Walter, please sit down. My husband sat back down in his chair and opened his mouth to my mother in law. Kelly is leaving because of you? How about you see something? What do you think you were doing? Giving money without consulting me and ruin my child's happiness. My mother in law replies, I'm just trying to save his life and happiness. Saying that, my mother in law held out the recorder. It was a recording of Walter's sarcasm and horrible words toward me. My mother in law had been preparing for this day since before I was pregnant. With this much evidence, even if we go to court, the divorce will be final. Do you agree to the divorce here and now? Or do you want a divorce after he goes to court? And the company and others find out about it. Which would you prefer? The lawyer combined all my evidence and confronted Walter about the divorce. Then Walter said as if he had given up the idea. Oh, okay, okay. I'm divorcing you. Nodding his head, he agreed to the divorce. I will never see you again. As I said this, my mother-in-law opened her mouth as if to put an end to it. I've been putting up with this for a long time, but I'm glad it's over. Walter, I'm leaving you. I'm going to live on my own. As she said, holding out a piece of paper, don't get involved with me anymore. Otherwise, I'll take this and file a police report. The paper was a medical certificate for my mother in those injuries inflicted by Walter. And then the lawyer tells him matter of factly, your mother is fully prepared to file a lawsuit. Then Walter started to cry. Mom, why did you betray me too? At the sound of Walter's grief, my mother in law's face contorted for a moment. Betray you? Isn't it betrayal to violate a family member? How can you cry without understanding what you have done? We have been living in hell for a long time. I said to him too, and stared at my husband. I took my mother-in-law's hand and left the office. After a while, my mother-in-law sold the family house. She moved to the countryside, relying on her relatives. Since her husband had left her a substantial inheritance, she was going to spend the rest of her life in comfort. As for me, after my divorce from Walter was finalized, I found the job far away from here. Now, with the help of others, I'm leading a new life with my son. I almost ruined my life with this marriage. There's no need to get used to the absurdity. I want my son to be a gentle person and cut back to the kindness of the around me.